Hello, welcome to 13 Universal Learning Beyond the Barriers, and this is A Level Biology CIE again with Shedro. So, we are up again solving questions on paper five, which is planning, analysis, and evaluation. That's A2 paper. So, get your writing material, you know the drills. Mm -hmm. Get your calculator, your writing materials, and come. Let's apply some concept. Remember, do not check the masking, try to solve the question. Pause the video and always solve the question. All right, let's go. Um, the drill also remains that you have to read the questions, the background in questions carefully. Okay, all these background questions you know you are aware of some of them. Some of them you're not. You must, 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 they may be unfamiliar, so they bring unfamiliar context. So flow with unfamiliar context. Is that okay? Says uh, make sure you read in between the lines and remember what you read because you're going to need them to solve question. Okay. Hydrogen carbonate indicator is a water soluble solution that acts as a source of carbon carb carbon dioxide for aquatic photosynthetic organisms. The solution changes color depending on the concentration of carbon dioxide in the solution. These colors are related to different pH values as shown in table 1.1. See table 1.1. Okay, so this is color of hydrogen carbonate indicator solution that's the color all right and they will have ph values that's concentration of carbon dioxide in the solution so if it is increasing as the ph decreases mm, and then we can have yellow this means that there's increase in co2 concentration if we see any of this color okay so we have orange red orange yellow orange yellow so yellow is the lowest okay but any of them means that the concentration of co2 is actually increasing that's acidic ph right it's becoming more acidic but look at this I remember that co2 dissolves in water to form a weak acid remember yeah so if you have more co2 more acidic ph the ph becomes but look at this decreasing carbon dioxide concentration you can as well see that once carbon dioxide is being used you know so it's going to start decreasing now photosynthesis causes this color all right so red magenta to magenta uh, purple is a, is the highest so this the ph increases to become more alkaline okay ph increases so if you if if it is being so so this is actually if, if you look at it this is a result of maybe photosynthesis right because co2 is being used so concentration decreases when you see it increasing um that means respiration is that okay mm -hmm. so you have to interpret to understand that all right that co2 is being used that is being produced all right by respiration here it's being used okay let's go on to the question is a cholera no, chlo sorry, chlorella vulgaris is a property that is single cell, aquatic, and photosynthetic. It can be immobilized. Immobilized means fixed to an insoluble support. In alginate beads, alginate beads with immobilized C vulgaris can be used to measure the rate of photosynthesis. Okay? Can be used to measure. So the question A says, a student noticed that a color change occurred from red to magenta. Red to magenta. Where's magenta? Red to magenta. That means CO2 is decreasing. Okay? It's being used. All right? When the alginate beads with immobilized C vulgaris is left in a container of hydrogen carbonate indicator solution and exposed to light, explain why this color change why the color change occurred so pause the video so i'd like you to why does the color change occur hmm? try it okay the color change occurred because the concentration of co2 decreased okay so the ph increased that means why why does the ph ph increase or decrease because they say explain okay because photosynthesis occurred co2 is being used so it decreases the ph also increases all right so let's see what the as i say see red magenta shows increase in ph or decrease in concentration of carbon dioxide 
So in light, silver gas uses up CO2 carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. It's being used for photosynthesis, that's why it decreased. Okay, two marks, guys. Um, the student used the alginate beads with immobilized silver gas in hydrogen carbonate indicator solution to investigate the rate of photosynthesis in different light intensities. To investigate rate of what? Photosynthesis in different light intensity. So um, before we continue, because you see, as you saw paper five, there's some you stop momentarily to think and consider some things so that there can be a flow and understanding what you're reading. Don't just read one way. Read critically in between lines, think alongside, ask questions. All right. So um, you see these two two phrases, right? Rate of photosynthesis different light intensities which one is independent variable which one independent which one is affecting which one all right let's go on so fig 1.1 shows some of the apparatus and reagents the student used this our student is working hard okay small beaker inside this hydrogen carbonate indicator solution and inside this test tubes test tube uh, our alginate beads contain silver barriers okay so silver barriers was put in in a fixed was fixed and in an insoluble support alginate beads so large, large, large test tube does it okay so identify the independent variable so which one is affecting which one mm -hmm. light intensity or rate of the synthesis which one so the answer is light intensity that's the independent variable okay so that's independent variable is the one that affects the other one the one that we change so as light intensity increases, rate of intensity will also affected, be affected to increase because there will be more light-dependent reaction, more light absorbed, more photophosphorylation. You know that photolysis occurs, more ATP and ADPH4, more, CO2, more oxygen produced. You know that become more um, carbon cycle. All right, let's go to the next question. So you must be connecting what you're reading to a topic. So relax, don't be afraid okay and walk through this remember the diagram is a stimulus material okay so just keep showing us that's that's why i keep putting before you the next question says the student was provided with a supply of alginate beads containing immobilized silver garrisons now this is the main question guys planning okay is number one question is planning but it was in number one now but the major question in planning is method so method all right is how now you have to identify your dependent variable independent all right and then and the key variables and then start talking about how you vary your independent variable how you measure your dependent and how you keep your dependent variable constant okay that is all about this so describe a method the student could use to collect data to determine the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis of C vulgaris using hydrogen carbonate indicator. Okay, and the experimental setup, okay, in fig, fig 1.1, that's it, guys. Mm -hmm. Your method should be set out in a logical order and be detailed enough to let another person follow, guys. That is it here, my people. Now, now, of course, before you go into method, hmm, they always ask a question on method. The next exam you're going to write, they will ask a question on method. And it's the, it's the one that has the highest mark. In this case, this is eight marks, eight solid marks. And you can easy, easily walk away with the eight marks. So the template stays. What is your independent variable here? Identify independent variable. That's the first thing to do. And your independent variable is light intensity, right? Hmm. So... The next is how do I vary my light intensity? How do I vary it? Before you start connecting them together in a prose format and then write the essay. Okay, so light intensity light intensity is an independent variable here. Okay, don't forget that. So light intensity is independent. How do I vary light intensity? That comes to your mind. Start thinking what you did in the lab during your P3. Okay, light intensity. There are two ways to actually mm, um vary your light intensity number one way is using one light okay of um a particular in light intensity okay 
and then change the distance of the line from the experimental setup okay so get the values from there so for example if this is the experimental setup for example i'm going to sketch something let's assume this is experimental setup now the distance from experimental setup this is maybe distant distant one maybe 10 minutes in 10 10 cm intervals okay you so you you put your your of course from here to here this is the distance right so you put your source of light the source of light is the same you have the same light intensity right so sorry this yeah the light um from here has the same wavelength all right this is light light source okay so okay so you you, you can vary it again by you know extending same interval this is d2 so this distance here right from here to here is d2 did you get yeah so yeah distance from the experimental source keep adjusting your light all right um source increasing the distance all right so you can see that so for example i can decide to say all right because you have to select value for your light um in the for your light in in, in a value that connects your light intensity all right so i can say 10 cm from zero to like maybe 50. so the first one is 10 cm the second one is 20 cm from the experimental source okay yeah so so i have 30 cm remember you must you have to all right list out the values you're using are 40 centimeters so 10 cm the interval is 10 cm and then have 50 and you need four values okay 50 centimeter okay that's the distance all right either you use this method or you use light of different wavelength you measure the wavelength using light meters okay to so measure the the power wattage but you see this one how do you determine your, your intensity here look for if this first one now because i didn't mention it your intensity here okay is i think is equal to one over the square of the distance yeah i think so confirm all right okay all right but you can get light of different wavelengths or different powers and put them on the same distance okay put this at the same distance right but they have different wavelength or different you measure the white light intensity you have maybe red light blue, um you know green light yellow light or okay um orange violet and all of that but you put them at the same distance okay and then make sure you measure their all right light intensity all right so um so if i'm gonna do this i'll say that of course you don't have to talk about how you prepare this so that light intensity is the independent variable and it can be measured, can be varied, varied, not measured, changed or varied by changing the distance of the light source. Okay. From the experimental, this experimental setup, just, just, just do something. Okay. Sketch. All right. Um, 10 to 50 cm. Okay. 10 cm interval. And then, then calculate the light intensity. Okay. All right. Using this formula. Okay. Now, remember that you also need to measure your independent variable independent variable is rate of the synthesis remember that once you mix this here you mix it you can measure the rate of the synthesis numerically by measuring time for hydrogen carbonate indicator solution to change color okay for each of these all right this to measure it all right so um remember that things to keep constant these are things you must work on you must identify your independent variable how to alter it identify your dependent variable how to measure it this is your outline you want to write an essay these are the things you have to take note of before you start don't jump into writing it okay because you write an essay have an outline that will guide you a template okay say so, okay what is my light my, my independent variable that's my line. How I'm going to vary it? I scribble it. Okay. What's my dependent variable rate of photosynthesis? How am I going to measure it? Okay. Time for the hydrogen carbonate indicator color to change, right? Color. All right. And then what am I going to keep constant? You see, the size or the number of the alginate beads containing zero should be the same. The mass 
okay the concentration of this hydrogen carbonate and the volume should be the same okay and of course um because i'm dealing with um the temperature should be the same and also i should reduce okay heat from the light source to the setup okay then i also need a control a control is that i will carry out the same experiment everything the same remove light source okay that's control and of course i have to repeat the experiment for each value each you no know, do about three replicates and calculate the value calculate the out the mean is that okay and then take cognizance of the source of hazard you know risk associated with it and then precautions so once you are done with this you now write an essay to describe it okay so somebody just start you just describe it you start for example i can give you an example here i just start writing by saying that um the alginate beads all right um okay experimental setup containing alginate beads all right um with hydrogen carbonate indicator solution was all right placed at different distances from light source okay and then when light is on um the time required to for color change is measured for each of them so so you do that for um every of the steps you're taking then you mention what should be kept constant okay so look at it let's not waste time here but this is an essay okay all right the same way you write your english essay but we have structured the essay by telling you what should go first okay and then use your own words but don't use id don't use interpersonal pronoun personal pronoun by saying um i should do this i should or you should no no just you know use um something that is that is just um direct okay speech from you all right so for example look at you see it's it's broken down so any eight from this use lamp or minimum five different distances okay or use lamp with um five different power ratings measure it these are the two ways to vary independent okay all right either using different lamp with different power ratings or weightage of different wavelength or you're using the same light but you're varying it all right use a light meter to measure okay light intensity for each light intensity they're using different power ratings here different light sources okay um idea that carry out investigation in a dark room this is for control um stated mass that the mass should be the same same volume of okay these are things you keep constant now if you want to start your experiment okay same starting color yeah they should have same these are things you standardize use a method to reduce heat effect method to measure the color change this this measure or not record um ph after all right set time and all of that or measure um measure a record the time taken for indicator so you can measure the time all right for color change or measure the ph is that okay either pa directly or color or time the numerical use at least three measurements for light and test for each of them calculate mean and safety all right, that's it guys it marks the student set up a large test tube containing arginine beads with immobilized cigarettes in hydrogen carbonate indicator solution rpa h 8.4 red so this is high ph okay all right the student kept this set up in the dark for 12 hours predict and explain the result that will be observed after 12 hours in the dark so what should happen to this after 12 hours there's no light okay what will happen predict and explain hmm? okay so um in the dark photosynthesis is not have occurring because photosynthesis cannot occur in the absence of light it needs light okay so every living thing okay plants especially plant plant they are either photosynthesizing or respiring or doing both so in the dark plants carry out more of respiration in the light they carry out of course more of um, photosynthesis but they also respiring so in this case in the dark this plant is carrying out respiration okay so no photosynthesis do you get and um, therefore the amount of co2 in, um what happens to the amount of co2 is going to increase right so it will change 
all right from this color where well, was now that color this color red okay and increased like yellow remember if you go and check it okay because co2 concentration is increasing photosynthesis is not occurring respiration is occurring that's it we'll turn orange or yellow ph okay um sorry ph is decreasing mm -hmm. ph is decreasing because as co2 in increases co2 is that it causes acidic all right acid acid reform so ph will decrease thank you or it becomes more acidic okay so respiration produces carbon dioxide right no photosynthesis occurring there let's go to the next question guys some scientists wanted to culture cells of sea vulgaris on a large scale for use as biofuel to determine the optimal growth conditions for sea vulgaris the scientists needed to determine the number of cells per cm cube of suspension to monitor the population growth they tried two methods to determine the number of cells per cm cube of suspension the first method used as Seki stick, Seki stick as shown in Fig 1.2. That's Seki stick, the black and white circle. That's the ruler. Okay, and look at the Seki stick is lowered into the suspension of cells until the black and the white circle is not able to be seen from above. So once you don't see it, so they will always describe. I like this. The depth in CM is recorded from the ruler as shown in Fig 1.3. So um, that they are actually demonstrating what they are saying here, okay? So there's no way to get confused. Every material, every part of the question is speaking to you. Pay attention to them. They are trying to provide clarity. Pay attention, all right? So you see the depth is recorded from the ruler. So look at what it's saying. Suspension of civil guards. Don't jump. Just look at it. Black and white circle is not able to be seen. So they will measure the depth, okay? So they measure the depth. All right. So this is what they are saying they said the log 10 there's a this is a typo guys this in is supposed to be okay log to base 10 okay log to base 10 of course yes log to base 10 base 10 right so the log to base 10 of whatever of the number of cell let's call it x okay log to base 10 let me write it out here log to base 10 of number of cell so if number of cell is x so this is log x to base 10 mm -hmm. sorry this is math of number of this is the mean from a graph of log all right to base 10 of cells counted okay past cm cube suspension against circuit depth as shown in fig 1.1 okay so let's see guys so after the experiment this is what we have now it's time to fry this the fish so when the scientists inserted the circuit disk into a sample from their cell suspension the circle on the circuit stick was not able to be seen at depth of 1.9 so wasn't seen at depth 1.9 cm using the graph in fig 1.4 oh that's 1.4 okay uh, calculate the actual number of cells per cm cube cm cube of suspension show your work in and give answer to nearest one okay now guys pause this video and try it okay it's your turn do it stop eating that pizza and solve this question okay all right so let's deal with it pause it once you're done so they say we should calculate it at what 1.9 remember that from here to here in time you're dealing with graph find the value of one box from here to here is 10 boxes, right? 10 small boxes, these small boxes. And it's just 2. Because 1.4 to 1.6 is 0 0.2. So one box is 0 0.2 divided by 10. Okay? So one box here is 0 0.2. Is that okay? And one box here, from here to here is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 divided by 5. 5 boxes. That's 0 0.02. Okay? So one point 1.9 second depth should be in the middle of this shouldn't it be this okay 1.9 let's track it oh let's track it one two three four five shouldn't it be here shouldn't it, should it not be here guys hmm? shouldn't it be this 
اوكي يا تراك ات يا شنت بي اوكي سوري فور ذا ناو اف يو تريس ات اكستراپولت ذيس تو ذا واي اكسس ليتس جو جايز اوكي يا ذاتس ات رايت سو وات فاليو از ذات ريمبر 1 box is 0 0.02 so this is 5.3 uh, this is okay this is a third box that's 0 0.06 so this is going to be 5.36 okay 5.36 because that's a third box okay so this the first one is 5.32 5.34 5.36 good so we have that 5.36 okay so that means that um log okay log what log the number of cells which we don't know call it x hmm? to base 10 is what 5.36 okay so you see that mathematics and biology are together they have always been together 5.36. They are always together. You can separate mass and bio. Okay. Max brings logic. All right. All right. So, okay. Biology is multidisciplinary. You have a lot of math, chemistry, physics. So, what what will be x now? Calculate this. So, just x is going to be, um, of course, 10 raised to power or anti log. But we'll do 10 raised to power. Okay. 5.5.3 six pardon my okay yeah five point three six point the calculator yeah let's find out the value okay where is my calculator now get yours just press 10 rest to power hmm? uh, go to a calculator and then press 10 raised to power, okay. Yeah, 5.36. Okay, it gives me two, all right, that's a two, punch it and find out. Two, okay, two, nine, zero, okay, eight, yeah six maybe point seven 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 okay let me just but you know the question says we should to the nearest one thousand okay so i can just say nearest one thousand all right two two nine okay zero okay zero zero two hundred and twenty nine thousand cells amazing okay amazing so amazing so okay cells cells write the cells down okay. all right so if you can pause this video and then or, or replay it if you don't understand this okay but you have to extrapolate it and then okay so let's go what the answer says here yep two to nine okay correct working that's two max let's go on the second method used let's play with the second method the second method used a um a counting chamber to determine the number of cells per same cube of suspension fig 1.1 shows a section of counting chamber with cells present as viewed using the high power of a light microscope the depth of the one millimeters and one millimeters counting chamber the chamber the depth is 0 0.1 millimeters the scientists counted the number of cells in several section of a counting chamber so that's the counting chamber okay fig 1.5 cells will be counted and always get acquainted with your diagrams okay they are all stimulus materials to help you Okay, so you can see this shows if you don't look at this, you make mistake. It shows it says cells to be counted are within the one cm 
times one millimeter, one millimeter times one millimeter section of the counting chambers. Okay, so this is one millimeter. Okay, all right, all right. Within this, this is one millimeter. From here to here is one millimeter. From here to here, one millimeter. So within this chamber here, count it. Don't count the ones outside. Do you get? Okay, those ones outside here. Don't do not count this. Do not count this. Do not count this. Count only the ones within the grid. Okay. All right. So look at it. Number of cells per, cent per centimeter cube. The equation says count the number of cells in the one one millimeter times by one millimeter section of the counting chamber shown in Figure 1.5. Use your answer to calculate the number of cells per cm cube of suspension shown all your working. Okay, pause the video and let's up, apply mathematics. Come on, guys, do it. Where is your basic mathematical principles? You think you can escape maths by doing biology? No, no. There's maths in biology. Ma biology is the mother of all science. You know, because I say mother, okay, I can say that biology accommodates all sciences. And maths, you find chemistry, physics, you find maths, you find a lot of sociology, English. Biology is the most accommodating. It's very accommodating, right? So, yeah, it's a multidisciplinary. So let's 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 play games here now. Now, first of all, count it. Mm -hmm. Count it. Remember that the answer should be in centimeter cube. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, that's 24. We can't count this out. So, our 24 cells, okay? Yup, 24 cells, 24 cells. Remember, now, number of cells within that is 24. But you see, they say we should find how many cells within okay uh one cm cube 24 cells all right so don't forget that this 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 is in millimeters convert it because the answer must be in centimeters per centimeters so let's do our conversion on time right so volume here remember that volume we're looking at volume volume don't forget volume is what is length times width right length times width times height our height is what height has been given to us as 0 0.1 millimeters so 0 0.1 millimeters convert millimeters to centimeters if you want to convert millimeters to centimeters you divide by 10 okay so that means our height sorry i don't write it this height here is actually um okay multiply 0 0.1 and so divide by 10 you're going to have zero okay point because we are converting millimeters to centimeters you divide by 10 0 0.01 okay centimeters okay yeah centimeters all right so yeah good and then this is already 0 0.1 centimeter one millimeter is 0 0.1 okay cm is that okay yeah just to make it easy so this is also 0 0.1 centimeters right 0 0.1 centimeters all right so yeah so our volume here that has 24 cells is then equal to the length is 0 0.1 okay get your calculator uh, all right length is 0 0.1 let's do business length is 0 0.1 cm times another width is 0 0.1 also okay cm then times height has been given to us separately that's so the depth all right that that's how it represent the depth the depth is 0 0.1 zero okay one so what do we have as the volume guys v is volume yeah punch a little where's my calculator so let me punch it get yours 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 
okay, times 0 0.01, okay, and that gives me um, in standard form, okay, 10, 1 times 10 raised to power minus 4, is that okay? Okay, yeah, put it in standard form so it will be easy for you. So, but that is in centimeter cube, right? So, this volume contains how many cells? This volume contains 24 cells, like we we counted, okay? But they want us per, the number of cells per centimeter, this, that's one, per is one. So, that means one centimeter cube will give us what, okay? One cm cube will give us how many cells? okay it will give us one times this one times 24 okay all over one times 24 cross and multiply all over one times 10 to the power minus 4 you got it now 10 to the power mm -hmm. minus 4 minus 4 so if you do that what are you going to have you're going to have, you move up, okay, 10 to the power 4, minus 4 up, it becomes positive, okay? Law of indices. So it will be times 10 raised to the power 4. So when negative move up, it changes right to positive, the same with, okay? So that is 24, how many cells? Two, four, you put the four zeros, one, two, okay, three, and four zeros, cells, in one centimeter cube, is that okay? All right, sorry, this is taking time. All right, so this is, um, I think, the answer here. Hmm? That is the solution of that question, I guess. Well, let's check masking and see what masking says, right? Okay, yeah, that's the masking here, 24. Number of cells counted, 24, that's here, okay? Correct, and then this is the final answer for CM, that's 240, uh, 240,000 cells, okay? You can replay the video to understand it very well. All right, let's go to the next question. There's three marks, that's three hot marks. Number two, this is gonna be testing you on of course analysis evaluation and conclusion so light lichens consist of pro prototes and fungi living in close association both types of organisms benefit from this association lichens are found in large range of habitats including on the trunks of trees fig 2.1 shows an example of a lichen now the name of this lichen is the sorted <coughs> excuse me the sorted shield lichen Pamelia saxitilis on the trunk of a tree. Okay, here is a guy sorted lichen. The trunk of the trunk with no lichen. The guy is on the trunk. Interesting guy, isn't it cute? Okay, let's go on. The red deer Savius elaphus is found in many parts of the world, including North West Europe. The red deer are found in a large range of habitats including mixed woodlands mixed woodlands contain many different tree species thing 2.2 shows a male red deer okay there the guy is grazing on this grass and looking out to see if a predator like lion is coming very cute okay so there must be something they have in common let's go let's dig it out so as you read this question connect to the question guys okay connect the, do a massive reading okay good red deer have increased in numbers in the mountainous regions of scotland in north west europe since the 1960s scientists think that grazing yes we're getting to it scientists think that grazing of plants by red deer has affected the abundance of certain lichens found growing on the trunks of trees in mixed woodlands when you get to this kind of this kind of part you, you you might have to look at it scientists think that there's a factor here that factor is grazing 
This factor is affecting another factor, which is abundance of certain lichens. Abundance. Okay? So which one is independent variable? The one that is affecting. So this must be independent, okay? Affecting abundance. Let's go on. To investigate this, the scientists excluded red deer from certain mixed woodland areas exclosures in 1995, allowing the exclosures to remain ungrazed. So while other parts were being grazed, some parts were not being grazed. So they're just trying to vary the independent variable, okay? The grazed part and the ungrazed, which one has higher abundance? Okay, of certain regions. Do you get it now? So certain parts graze, certain parts not graze. Then later they check the abundance. In 2020, in 2013, the scientists compared the abundance, you see, of the sorted shield leaching in the exclosures and in the graze. I know they're going to compare it, right, to see the impact of grazing. Now, the scientists used the grid shown in Fig 2.3 to determine the abundance of the sorted shield leaching on the tree trunks. Where is the grid? Good. This is 15 cm. Okay, that's the grid. Right? So, transparent plastic shield circles. Okay? So, let's see whether there are any information. All right? For each tree sampled, the grid was placed against the tree trunk at three different heights, the base, middle, and upper. Yeah, the scientists counted the number of circles. Okay, so counting the number of circles that contained the salty shield bleaching. So that number maybe is our key. The number of circles that contained the salted shield shield leaching was used, yes, yeah, was used to calculate the percentage cover of salted shield leaching on the tree. This study was carried out over the course of three months, right, June, July, and August, in the summer of 2013, in the exclusions and grazed area. So the ungrazed and grazed. So where were you in the summer? Okay, did you travel anywhere? All right, now it's good to understand this. So let's count what is here. But you check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's ten in each of them. One, two, three. So there's ten. So how many? How many of these boxes? One, two, three. One, two. So nine boxes. So each one containing ten. So the total of the circle is ten times nine, which is ninety. Do you get ten in each boxes, and we have nine boxes. So nine times ten. All right. So ninety circles. All right. Now A says suggest two variables that the scientists should have standardized in this investigation. Which variables that could affect? All right the abundance of the sorted lichen okay, in this experiment pause the video and try it i'm gonna try okay you try let's try everybody try okay uh, i feel that um of course that could be determined by um the height the height of the trunk of the tree could affect the abundance okay and i think that age of the tree Okay, or the size of the tree or species of the tree could also affect. Let's see what it said here. Any two. Okay, height of grid above the ground. Side aspect of the tree. Yeah, the side of, of the tree you are measuring. Okay, the age of the tree. You are, the size, type of species of trees. Okay, grid placed horizontally oriented as diamond shaped. So these are things that are affected. Nobody taught you this, but. Anyway, it says suggest think outside the box. I mean, think logically. So nobody taught you this, but you start imagining. Use your imagination. Thinking outside the box. Use imagination to get outside the box. Okay, the box is what you, your content is your box. What your teacher taught you, what the textbook says. Okay, going outside is, they didn't say this, but there's a, there's a reality outside the box. Guys, there's a reality. Use your imagination in this paper. Okay, height of, yeah. Could affect it side of age type okay that's what i'm trying to say too much for that way of thinking state one risk and safety precaution that scientists should take should take when measuring the abundance of shortage you are going into the wild to measure the abundance of shortage don't you think that one of the risk is dangerous animals animals what of there's there are lions there because this is a wild so that means you will need to go in groups. Okay. But meanwhile, these small districts have pollen grains, and the pollen grains are allergen. So the risk and precaution, risk and precaution. 
So presence of pollen grains can be allerg allergic. Okay, so that's the risk. What's the precaution? Wear face mask. Okay, to get climbing trees and other thing. So you use ladder. Right? There are more. Yeah. So name hazard and risk matching precaution. This is hazard. That's risk. That's precaution. You must match them. All right? That's how it works. Plant leaves back pulling. It can be toxic or scratchy or irritant or allergic. What do you do? Suitable PPE medication. Don't ingest them. Use medication or use face mask. Okay. All right. Animals. Animal waste. Dangerous. Some of these animals are dangerous. Their waste can be allergic or toxic. Plasmosis. Use medication. Working group. Travel with expert. Fungal leaching. Toxic return allergy. Okay. Suitable PPE. Cover your face. Inhaling fungal spores. Infection. Wear mask. Okay. Wood falling. Injury. Look where you are stepping. Boots. So you see that all of this. Nobody talks to this. Okay. But you have to imagine that. All right. Two marks. The scientists calculated the percentage cover for the sorted shield leaching as 63.3% on one of the trees using the grid in Fig 2.3. Calculate how many circles on the grid contain sorted leaching. Show your working and give your answer to the nearest one about. Okay. Um, please pause this video. It's time for you to show show us what you got. Okay. Yeah. Don't just watch this video. Okay, try to solve questions. So go solve this question. Come get chocolate. Okay, honestly, come get chocolate. So calculate how many circles. So this is percentage, right? Percentage um, coverage, cover for the shelter. Okay, remember that when we counted that tree, we had 90. 90 circles were there. How many of them contains the sorted legions? Just multiply them with the percentage coverage, that, which is 63. 63 percent mm, is is the same thing as 0 0.6 versus 3.3 that's 0 0.633 okay so multiply with the total to find the actual value okay so 0 0.633 times 90 okay 56.97 so this gives me 56.97 56 all right 56 point uh oh 56 point what 97 hmm? 97 but they said my answer should be in whole number no decimal so nine is up to one i can't call it one put it there um, don't you think this should be 57? Anyway, I'm not sure. We're going to check the masking. So that's 57, right? This is what I think. 57 of them, okay, of the circles on the grid contain sorted leaching. Okay, so multiply the percentage coverage with total number. Okay, so let's see. Number of circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. 57 circles. Two marks. All right. The scientists performed a test to compare the abundance of the sorted shield leaching in the exclosures and the grids area. Stated not the no hypothesis is always a negative hypothesis. Pause the video and try it. Okay. Remember, we are trying to compare the number of sorted leaching in both exclosures and grids. So the no hypothesis states that the abundance of the sorted that there is stated it states that there is no significant difference or no difference between the abundance it always goes with negative no there's no significant all right difference or abundance of um of the abundance of this there's no significant difference between the abundance of the sorted shield leaching in the exclosure and that of grace area okay that is it okay there's no difference in the abundance okay there's no difference in the all right, so there's no difference in the abundance of sorted shield leaching between exclosures, and that's it. That's no hypothesis. No, 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 no difference. Okay. All right. So let's just one mark. Table 2.1 shows the mean result and values of t-tests obtained. Let's look at that. Okay, you must be asked a question on conclusion. Now, conclusion is 
Now, we already said there's no, of course, um, that's the, no hypothesis. There's a state one conclusion that can be made from the data. So from your data, what can you see? Pause the video. Mm -hmm. Can you see, look at the position of the breed on the, this base, middle, upper. Mean percentage coverage in exclusions at the base, middle, upper. All right. Mean percentage okay, grace. Okay, this details. So you can see that, right, for the basis, both for exclusion and grace, all right, there, there's no significant difference. That means, right, um, not significant. Right, so it's due to chance according to, according to this data mm -hmm. as in at, at critical probability of 0 0.05. And if you look at for the middle, there's significant difference. Can you see this is 3.4, this night 9.8? The difference is significant, it's due to uh, is not due to chance, maybe due to another factor. All right, the same thing with upper the difference this 8.5, this is 22. So there's significant difference between the mean percentage cover of that sorted leaching, okay, in the exclosures and that of this for both upper and middle. Now these are things right the data looking at the trend. Okay, if you look at look at look at that trend, see on that trend. Mm -hmm. See for both as if you compare exclosure for base, middle, and upper, and of course grace area, which one has more? The grace area and the exposure, which one has more abundance? The grace area has more abundance. So the more they grace, the more um, the percentage cover of that leaching increases. Okay. Now if you check the base, middle, and upper, the one that has the highest more abundance is the upper. Okay. Followed by the middle, the base has the lowest. So these are what the data is telling us. The data speaks. It speaks so that's what they want us to know okay see that no significant difference between exclusion okay there's a significant difference based on what the data is saying that the percentage cover abundance of sorted shield is greater as the height of grid increases yes as the height increases it increases percentage cover abundance leaching is greater in is greater in grace area than that's what is saying okay so guys that's one mark um, state two improvement the scientists could make to their study to determine the effect of grazing of red deer on the abundance of salted shield leaching in the mixed woodland. So what if what can they improve on? Right, improvement deals with looking at uh, the independent variable, right? Of of, uh, of course, dependent variable how you measure it, but then uh, the constant variable, the key variable how you're going to standardize it. Okay, so they must ensure that the environment has the same the grace and on grace have the same um about effect factors like temperature okay light intensity okay should be the same same climatic condition okay and it should repeat this experiment all right of in different years over years to be sure okay do it year one year two year three year four all right now for the about factor Maybe the battle factor should be considered too, right? Like the presence of certain species should be the same, both grace and, and then grace. So check near about the factor is similar. So, okay. So that's standardized and battle factor. Presence of other species must be same, okay? Seen in both um, grace and grace to make sure that they have the same biotic and abiotic factors, all right? So standardizing is very important, two marks. Repeat the investigation already. Okay, guys, thank you. Leave, comment, share this video. Let us know what you want, okay? Like this video, okay? We're going to have series three next time. Thank you. This is Shedro. Bye. See you next series.